And we will be talking about one of, if not the most dirty word to most people. Giving. This is probably one of the most controversial words and topics in church today. And so I ask you to prepare your heart because we are going to talk about giving time, talent, and treasure. Time, talent, and treasure. So often, we think that churches, pastors, evangelists, and even missionaries, many times are just after our money. And some may be. However, most are just following the plan of God for their life, which requires resources. I didn't expect this one to go very well. (laughs) We must also remember it is not ours. That's right. As believers, it all belongs to Him. That's right. Amen. If we truly understand this, it would help us tremendously. Not only are most churches not out to get your money, and not only is it not yours, but God's Word promises blessing, provision, rewards for that giving. And there are three primary ways in which to give, which we mentioned. Time, talent, and treasure. Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every person, purpose under heaven. Verse 3, the second part of verse 3 says, There is a time to break down and a time to build up. Now listen to me carefully, LFA. We are in a building up season. Amen. Right. It is a transition mm-hmm. leading to a transformation. Right. We all know that transitions are not easy. My Hello. <laughs> transitions are not easy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they're not even wanted. But transitions are necessary. That's right. In order to get a transformation. Amen. Amen. In other words, things just don't happen because you want them to. No. As as humanity, we transition. Mm -hmm. We transition from infants Mm -hmm. to toddlers to adolescents Mm -hmm. to teenagers to young adults. Little adults. <laughs> the advice. Medium grown adults. <laughs> and so on. There's always transition. Why is it that when it comes to God's house, we never want transition that leads to transformation? Why do we fight it? But we're talking about time. And we at LFA are in a building up season. And everyone here knows it takes time to build. Ask those that are in the house today that are building a house. Right. Right. It takes time to build. (laughs) Yep. You do not build Rome in a day. No. We, when we want to begin building or we want to begin the transition, we want to start today and be done tomorrow. That way. <laughs> we want to see the results. But may I tell you, anytime that anything is worth having, you want to see the results, there takes some preparation. Yes. That's right. In order to get the results you're looking for. Sure, we can do all kind of gimmicks and probably bring people in and they'd be gone next month. Mm-hmm. Yep. But we don't want that. We want a transition that when people come, they feel at home, right. and welcome, and loved, yes. and appreciated, Amen. and hear the word of God. That's right. Amen. 
And they become a part of the building here. Not only does it take time to build, it is not only the pastor's job to build. Amen. I got one. <laughs> it takes everybody to yes. build. Matter of fact, Scripture says that it's the pastor's job to train and equip the people mm -hmm. to build the kingdom. Right. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. And then the people that have been equipped along with the pastor build the kingdom in the house. Right. Now there are several excuses we run into with this that I came up with. There may be a lot more. I came up with a couple. Number one, I don't have time to spare or time to give. That's the excuse. May I say to you that we all have the same 24 hours in every day. Yes. I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> I remember years ago, I was listening to someone teach, and I realized that this person was a very busy person. They had written many commentaries. They were president of a, a seminary. They were a pastor of a mega church. They traveled to conferences four, five, six, eight, ten times a year. Uh, unlike the song we sang, Majesty Pastor Jack Hayford, he had a church on the way in Bed Ice, California. In 1996, he started uh, the King's University. Uh, he also wrote over 400 hymns. He's written 30 books or so. And I'm like, God, how do they have that kind of time? Mm -hmm. Where do they have that kind of time? To do that kind of work for the kingdom. Whereas I don't have that kind of time. And the Holy Spirit checked me and quickened me in the moment. And he said two things to me. He said number one. You have the same 24 hours they do in every day. And then he said the most important thing. I didn't call you to be that person. Right. Or Pastor Jack Hayford. Right. right. Amen. I'll call you to be you. And so when we compare ourselves to somebody else, mm -hmm. we're doing a disservice to that person, right. to myself, and primarily to the kingdom. That's right. Because I'm not focused, listen, on what time I'm supposed to give and what I'm supposed to do with it because I'm taking the time I'm supposed to be imparting in here and comparing it to somebody I'm not. Right. The second excuse I find I have more important things. Mm. And we don't necessarily say that out loud, but we say it with our actions. What could be more important than building His kingdom? Yeah. What could be more important than seeing your neighbor come to Christ? Amen. Your loved one, your yes. family. Come to Christ and investing into them. And then the third excuse I find, which I find to be the worst of all three of them, if there's any worse than the other, because this one here is more of a matter of the heart than the other two, I believe. Well, I would like to help, but mm. only if I get to choose what I want to do. <laughs> if I can't do this, I won't do that. Hmm. That is not giving up your time. No. That is wanting a position. Yeah. That is selfish and self-motivated. Let me give you a couple of examples. I would sing, or I would play, only if I didn't have to go to practice. I would teach, as long as I didn't have to study. 
<laughs> right? I would do outreach. But it takes from my only day of, quote, my free time. Mm -hmm. Who's free time? Yeah. We're not our own. We're bought with a price. It's not mine. It's his. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not trying to say that every spare minute you have, you're to give to the church or to give to people. What I'm saying is don't make excuses. For not doing it. Right. Now, how can we break free from these excuses? Number one, understand that we all have the same 24 hours a day. Listen, if I want to give up my time, I will prioritize it so I can. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let me say this. Everybody's time is not the same in giving to the house. Some people give in the house. Mm -hmm. Some people give outside the house. Mm -hmm. And both are equally important. That's right. In other words, some people want to come in and they want to clean and they want to work and they want to do and they want to build. And some people want to go out and knock on doors right. and invite and build out there. Right. And both are equally important and none is no less than the other. That's right. right. So we will prioritize to make it happen. When we, second way we break that, when we truly begin to understand grace, mercy, forgiveness, and freedom, we will want to give of our time. Yes. When we truly understand what God has done for us mm -hmm. yes. in setting us free, right. and yeah. delivering us, yes. and redeeming us, mm -hmm. It will put in us a desire to do so and to invest. Notice I didn't say give of my time. I said to invest. Because when you give of your time to the kingdom, you're not giving anything away. You're investing into the kingdom of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's not a giving something away. It's an investment. It's an investment in the house. It's an investment into the community. It is an investment into the, your neighbors and your family and your friends, your lost loved ones, your frenemies. <laughs> it is an investment. And when we begin to understand that, we will begin to invest time to build His house and His kingdom. It will flow naturally. And thirdly, when I realize realize serving is not about me, I will help in any area and be willing to do what it takes whenever it takes. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Now, let me make a statement here. Mm -hmm. We all have different schedules. Yes. Not everybody can serve at the same time. That's right. Let's not look at what we don't see people doing <laughs> And let's look at what they are doing. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Serve them as they serve the kingdom. And let's give them our time. Mm -hmm. Our talent. And our treasure. But let's, let's take a minute more here on time. I want to talk about something here. Because what we don't understand is. Is time is something we never get back. Right. My wife and my family will tell you at times. I am a waster of time. <laughs> I have gotten much better. Yeah. And I have prioritized a lot more than I did in the past. And I thank God for that. Right. But I got a long way to go. Don't beat yourself up for what you haven't done. Sit down and prioritize your time and start where you are. Right. Amen. And begin to Give that time unto the Lord as He would see fit. Yes. You say, well, I, I don't know where to invest my time in the house. Come see me. <laughs> Come see me. Come see Becky. Go see Dustin and Whitney. Yep. We'll talk about a few of those things in a moment. Mm -hmm. But investing our time 
should be natural as children of God. Secondly, we give of our talent. Exodus 35, 10 says, All who are skilled among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. They were building a building and a temple and a tabernacle and they were doing stuff and God said, we need people that do this and we need people that do that. All you that are able to do that, y'all come. Listen. All y'all that are able, y'all come. Right. There's still some out there that still need to come. Right. We got this mentality somehow that the church doesn't need what I've got to offer. Mm. May I say that the kingdom of God, he needs plumbers and painters and cleaners right. and lawn maintenance yes. and building maintenance. Yes, amen. CPAs, mm -hmm. administrators, right. children's teachers, yes. Sunday school teachers, yes. youth pastors. Mm -hmm. He needs everything for his house. First mm -hmm. Peter 14 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others yes. as faithful stewards of God's grace. Exodus 31, 3 says, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, truth, wisdom, and understanding, with knowledge and with all kinds of skills. Colossians 3, 23, whatever you do, work heartily for the Lord and not for men. And Romans 12, 11 says, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. See, Scripture is full of talent. Whether it was for the building of the tabernacle, the temple, evangelizing, or whatever it was, here, listen, we all have talent yes. of some kind. It could be sewing, cooking, mechanicing, heating and air conditioning, plumbing, painting. Mm -hmm. The question is not do I have talent, but what am I doing for the kingdom with my talent? Mm -hmm. What am I doing for God for, with what he's given me for his house and for his kingdom? It could be as simple as greeting people, taking an offering, mm -hmm. yeah. doing outside, inviting people to church, whatever the case may be. It could be running the soundboard. It could be playing the drums or the piano or singing or leading worship. Mm -hmm. It could be teaching, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Some of us, some of us separate our career from our talent in God's house and yet oftentimes they're one and the same. Yeah. Not always, but many times. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to music, construction, landscaping, and all those things. You would be surprised at how much I don't know. <laughs> and can use someone else's expertise. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that air conditioner goes out, I don't have a clue. <laughs> That's it. The bus broke down. I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't. But some of you do. Yeah. Also, God is not as concerned about your ability as he is your availability. Yeah. You might say, well, I, don't know, I can do that, but I'm not really good at it. Give God a chance. Yeah. Let him see what he can do through you. Yeah. Look, when we read scripture, we find that ordinary people did extraordinary things when they stepped out and let God use them. That's right. They made themselves available. We have a stammering Moses who led the people out on dry ground through the Red Sea. We have a doubtful Thomas, a denying Peter, a ruddy David, a murdering Saul, even a donkey. God used because he was available. Right. That's it. He can use you. And you have talent. I, I don't know really what I can do. You can do something. You, every one of us can do something. Let me say something here as we finish with talent, because this is one of the big ones that I had to walk through. Mm -hmm. We often will do what we want to and stretch ourselves out to do something for us. Mm -hmm. 
and not step out and trust God to do something for the kingdom and for his house. Yeah. How many here have done something on your own that you didn't think you could do and you got it done? Yeah. And how many have done that in God's house? Amen. Some have, some haven't. Mm -hmm. The point is, if you'll do it for you, why won't you do it for him? Right. And let me make something else noted here about talent. It'll be very plain. I mentioned a while ago about some people want to choose where they get to serve mm -hmm. and what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Listen, as one preacher I know used to say, if you ever lose your toilet bowl anointing, <laughs> you never had a platform anointing. That's right. Amen. That's it. If you can't scrub toilets, you don't need to lead in any capacity. Mm -hmm. Now, say you have to scrub toilets. But if you're above that and that's beneath you, you have no business leading in the house of God. Let me say it boldly. Let me say it loud. Let me say it for those in the rafters. Amen. <laughs> if you can't cut the grass, yep. you don't need to teach Sunday school or lead the youth. Right. Not saying you have to do those things, mm -hmm. but if you're above doing that, yeah. Amen. That's it. We should all be willing to do whatever it is we are able to do to build God's house. Whatever we have the capacity to do. And then we have treasure. Matthew 6, 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm -hmm. There will your treasure, your heart be also. Luke 12, 15, I'm going to read it. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 through 21. And he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness. Covetousness is wanting something somebody else has that you don't have. Right. Let me define it there for you. If somebody else has a bath boat and you want it, that's covetousness. Mm -hmm. It's distraction. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. And he spoke a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room to bestow or to store my fruits. And he said, This is what I'll do. I will pull down my barns, and I will build greater barns, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have much goods and have laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool! This night your soul shall be required of you. Then who shall those things be which you have provided? And then here's the kicker verse. Verse 21. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. You see, this scripture has been used in so many different ways. Don't have a savings account. Give it all away. That's not what this scripture says. What it's saying is that if you save your savings account with having the heart, without having the heart and, of God and the kingdom of God, then you're being selfish and like this man if it's all about you. Right. In other words, let me put it very plainly. Let me be very honest because this is a challenging scripture and a lot of people like to duck around it. But let me be very plain. If you have a savings account for whatever amount and God says you take this much of that savings account and you give it to so and so missionary mm -hmm. and you don't give it. Right. You become like this man. Yeah. Right. Notice I said if God tells you to give it. Right. Not me. Not the missionary. Right. None of those. God. Right. One thing that I do not like and I do not think God likes is someone who pleads on emotions to get money. Mm. Yeah. Right. If we don't give willingly to the kingdom of God mm. yeah. and we give out of coercion, mm. that's not a good thing. I will never ask people to give out of coercion. I will always ask you to do what God wants you to do. And I will teach biblical principles of doing that. Right. Amen. 
But so often, listen to me very carefully, this area of giving of our treasure is the hardest to give. And let me tell you why. Let me be real honest. I want you to get this perspective. Because we live in the West. Mm -hmm. And I work hard for my money. Right. That's right. But remember, it's not yours. That's right. No matter how hard you work for it, mm -hmm. it's not yours. Yep. Proverbs in chapter 3, verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth. And with your first fruits of all that you produce. Deuteronomy 15 10 said, You shall give to him freely, and your heart shall not be grudging when you give to him, because for this the Lord will bless you in all of your work and all that you undertake. Let me restate that again and let you listen to this. You shall give to him freely, and your heart shall not be grudging when you give to him. Because for this, the Lord will bless you in all your work and all that you undertake. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is a promise. Yes. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. The Bible talks much about treasure. Listen, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. Now listen, just because we've seen the bad and the ugly does not mean we need to neglect or negate the good. Right. That's right. But we have, some of us. We have allowed what we've seen to dictate our faith in what we do. Mm. And faith is not the substance of things seen. Right. That's right. Amen. It's the substance of things hoped for, and yet the evidence of what has not been seen. Right. In other words, we are to give regardless. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just don't know if they're doing right by the, my, my giving there. Mm -hmm. How many here buy stuff at the store? Yes. Do you always agree with everything that store does with your money? No. <laughs> I'll leave it there. <laughs> you give regardless. Let me lay out a scenario for you. If you are following God, I mean, you really are. You're genuinely a born again believer and you're seeking God for your life. And God places you in a church. You know God called you to that church. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that God and God entrusts you to that church? Wouldn't that include your treasure? Yes. Let me put it another way. If you can't trust a church with your money, how can you trust them with your soul? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> Here you are entrusting your eternity and your spiritual development, but you're not willing to trust them with your finances, which is fleeting. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm. That's very good. That's good. If you can trust a church with your soul, why can't you trust it with your money? Think on that as the Lord directs you in giving. If I believe in what the house is doing and God's building me there, trust me, I'm going to sow into it. Right. I'm going to give what I can, when I can, how I can, because I believe in it. Right. Even if I don't always agree with the direction the leadership goes. Mm -hmm. Because trust me, I don't always agree with everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all going to agree with everything everybody else does. Now does it decipher my giving? Time? 
talent, or treasure. We are challenged all through scripture to give. I can tell you the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of passages that have to do with giving. Time, talent, and treasure. But here's the thing. I don't have to give. I get to give. Amen. That's good. Yes, I get to give. See, he gave the greatest gift ever. Yes. Well, wouldn't I want to give him everything I have? Right. In Amen. In return. Yes. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Think of, as James comes to play, your giving as an investment. Number one, an investment in this house. Number two, and primarily, an investment into the kingdom. So let me ask you a question as he plays. How many would say, I haven't given much time, but I would be willing to give time and if you'll show me what I can do, I'll be willing to set aside some time and make sure I can get that done. Can I see your hand? All over this building. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me ask this. Some of you have talents that she has been exposed. You would say, I'm willing to step out on faith and trust God with what he's given me. And I'm willing to use my talents for this house and for the kingdom. Can I see your hand? Wow, all over the building. All over the building. Now let me ask the last one and the most important one. Well, they're all important, but... How many would say, you know, I haven't always given, but I will trust God and I'm going to step out and I'm going to give because I believe in this house. And most of all, I believe in the kingdom. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, all over the house. If you would, stand with me as we close. Father, we come into your presence.